Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Sucre with the Arizona Trauma Association, and this is Trauma in a Flash. Over 5 million central venous catheters are placed each year in the United States, making this procedure an essential core skill in trauma and critical care. However, as with any procedure, it comes with risks and benefits. Notably, immediate risks include injury to the blood vessels, injury to the surrounding structures, pneumothorax, air embolism, or even cardiac injury. Long-term complications include infection or vessel stenosis. Fortunately, the complication rates due to central line placement have been reduced over the last two decades from a high of around 12% to a new low of 4%. This is in part due to the use of ultrasound guidance and the implementation of antimicrobial catheters. The four main approaches for central venous access are the internal jugular vein, the common femoral vein, and the two methods for access of the subclavian vein include the subclavian approach and the supraclavicular approach. For the subclavian approach, the patient should be positioned with a shoulder roll if possible and with the bed placed in Trendelenburg. The patient is prepped and draped in full sterile fashion and a timeout performed. As always, I prepare my table with the instruments ready in sequential order. The anatomy should be clearly defined by palpating the sternal notch and identifying the angle of the clavicle. The location of insertion is approximately 2-3 to three centimeters inferior to the angle of the clavicle. I infiltrate the skin widely in a fan shape. I then insert the needle in the direction I plan to approach the subclavian vein. The needle stays at the level of the clavicle and I inject the lidocaine into the periosteum of the clavicle. The introducer needle is positioned with its bevel up and inserted in a controlled fashion through the skin. I then drop my hand so that the needle and syringe are parallel to the patient. I advance the needle to touch its tip to the clavicle, allowing me to have a good understanding of exactly where my needle tip is located while still safely at the superficial level of the clavicle. At this point, I pull the needle back slightly. I adjust the direction of the needle to aim at the sternal notch. Then, using my non-dominant thumb, I depress the tissue, causing the needle to be directed deeper. I advance straight forward underneath the clavicle while pulling back on the syringe. Once the subclavian vein is accessed, I turn the needle 90 degrees from its original upright position to a position where the bevel is oriented inferiorly. Dark blood should be easily withdrawn. I lock the needle into position with my non-dominant hand and remove the syringe. I check for any evidence of pulsatile bright red blood. If this is seen, you must assume that the artery has been accessed and the needle should be removed with pressure held for 5 to 10 minutes. Once the subclavian vein is successfully accessed, the guide wire should pass through the needle without resistance. Once the guide wire is in position, the needle is removed and a small skin incision is created along the guide wire with an 11 blade scalpel. At this point, the dilator is placed over the guide wire and advanced through the soft tissues. The dilator is removed and the central line should be easily passed over the guide wire completely to its hub into the subclavian vein. The guide wire is removed and the catheter is positioned at approximately 14 centimeters for a right-sided approach and 15 to 16 centimeters for the left-sided approach in the average size adult. At this point, the three ports should be easy to withdraw dark blood and flush easily with sterile injectable saline. I place a locking system onto the catheter and suture the locking system into place. The site should be cleansed with chlorhexidine, a bio patch placed, and the site covered with a sterile dressing. A post-procedure chest x-ray should be performed to look for any evidence of pneumothorax and to ensure proper positioning of the catheter in the subclavian vein with its tip at the superior vena cava and right atrial junction. Of note, the SVC right atrial junction is located on a chest x-ray at the level of the carina. Performing this approach using these steps as shown is safe, effective, and well tolerated in the awake patient without the need for additional sedation or analgesia. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Trauma in a Flash. Music